and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're talking Alaskan Malamutes. The Alaskan Malamute is considered to be a very wolfy looking dog breed and also a very large and ancient one. They were originally bred for hauling heavy freight because of their strength and endurance and later a sled dog. Malamutes were thought to be created by the ancient Malamute people of Alaska's Norton Sound region and certain individuals have been recorded as weighing up to 100 pounds. Despite having an Alaskan Malamute myself, I'm off to visit Lorna Bartlett of Arctic Rainbow Malamutes as I feel that in order to evaluate this breed, I need to meet lots and lots of Malamutes together in a home environment. Hi. Hi. Oh, look at the howling! <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to see you, and Lorna, you. how are you? I'm Lovely. very well, well, thank you. Look who we've got Lovely here. to see you again. This is Pepper. This is Pepper. Hi, Pepper. Yeah, Pepper's nine now. Nine. So she's Chili's daughter. Oh. This is Chili. Hello, Chili's Chili. twelve now. So she's our oldest, our oldest Malamute, and she's mother to Pepper. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> so all big squishy birds. <laughs> so you've got more, haven't you, hiding out the back? Yes, I've got another four. Another oh, four. So how many of you also you've got six? This. Yeah, you can never have too many. That's a lot of Malamutes yeah. in one house, and they're, they're, not, they're not small. Oh, look at them! Hi! Do you want to let them in? Oh, they all come. Hi. Brace yourselves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Doobie's Doobie. 11 and a half. Doobie, you're massive. Yeah, Doobie, you're... you're... Cute and that's Teddy, the puppy. <laughs> she was one last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're beautiful. She's got a gorgeous coat, hasn't yeah, she? Lovely, yeah. Well, he's she's got so a gorgeous sweet. coat. Yeah, they're both long coated. Because of... Gorgeous. Lorna. I think I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'm in a Malamute sandwich right now. We are literally immersed in great big bear-like squishy fluffy canines so how long has it been since you first fell in love with the alaska malamute i fell in love with the alaska malamute probably about 30 odd years ago that's uh, a long time ago a long time ago but i waited um until about 15 years ago before i actually got my first yeah. malamute so what was it that made you fall in love with these beautiful animals i saw them on telly and didn't even know what they were um but just said to my husband who we just we just got married and said I don't know what that dog is, but one day I'm going to have one oh, of those. These dogs are very relaxing to have around, aren't they? It's very, very therapeutic. Yeah. Now, one of the one of the common questions that comes up with me is um, Malamutes having an inability to to live with other Malamutes or other dogs. What's your take on that whole situation? Uh, Malamutes can live quite happily with, with other dogs. We do have a slip pack because we had an altercation between Loopy here and her mum, Pepper, who's in the lounge. Um, it was over food and we, we tried lots of different things over the course of weeks and months and years probably to try and get them back together again but the safest thing for everybody is to keep keep them apart. Yeah. Uh, in the wild they go their separate ways. Yeah. You know, we are asking them to live together because we love them. The Malamutes aren't that fond of other dogs um, so we do have to be careful where we walk them. We certainly don't let them off the lead where we know there'd be other dogs. And I love my dogs, I just want to keep them safe. The interesting thing is to, to try and work out why the Malamute is the way the Malamute is and of course it goes back to the reason why they were bred. The Malamutes are freight breeds and they are, you know, they're very people dog, they're working breeds, so they worked with, if you go back to Inuit times, they worked um, in the tribes with the Inuit Indians and they would be there, they, they would hunt, they would um, obviously pull their loads for them, so people meant happiness. However, if it was a wolf or a bear, then obviously that, that was something else, so they were there to protect you know, to protect the tribes and protect the children. That's one of the reasons why they don't particularly like other animals, because it was yeah. bred into them. Of course, um, you've got the contrast between Malamutes and, and Huskies, and a lot of Huskies, especially the working, some of the working ones I've seen, um, people can mistake them for smaller Malamutes, can't they? Because some of them are quite similar looking. A lot of Huskies can live quite happily together. So what is the fundamental difference between Huskies and why they get on so well as a pack and Malamutes, you have to sort of sometimes keep them a little bit more separate. 
Um, I think just that they, they were bred for different reasons. Huskies bred for speed, whereas Malamutes are, are, are more of a working dog, a fake dog, and they would they would sort of look after the tribes years ago, whereas Huskies weren't bred for that. So tell me about their coats because we've got we've got two short hairs here and we've got two long hairs. Long coats. Are you allowed to show them or are you not allowed to show them? You wouldn't show them because it would be a disqualification because when you're showing, um, you're looking at fit for purpose. A long coat wouldn't be fit for purpose because it would bring in the snow. They also get a lot of snowballs caught in their feet because the fur on their feet is so much thicker. Um, however, <laughs> um, studies have shown, and when I've spoken to sort of breeders in America, that actually if you take the long coat out of your breeding lines, the coat goes flat. So it does actually affect uh, the coat. So they are there, you know, they yes. are in there for a purpose. So you need to keep the long hair in. The thing with the long coats is they, they will work well for you. You've just got to be prepared to clean up afterwards. Yeah. So tell me about your grooming routine. So the long coats or the thicker coats, they're, they're sort of groomed really. They need sort of a little bit of a flick over every day. Um, whereas the standard coats, you know, that once a week is a good yeah. groom. So with the coat, of course, we've got the we've got the outer guard hairs and then we've got the really dense, thick undercoat here. How many hours will it take you to work your way through the coat? If for doobie, for instance, if I bath doobie, then I have to allow a day. It, it takes ages to get them wet, ages to get them bubbled up, then ages to get rid of the bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it is lent, but I love it. I find yeah. it. I find it quite therapeutic. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a way of bonding with your dog oh, as well. Gosh. So I actually, I, I really love it. In summer months, then we will exercise these in the evenings. We've also where we're going later over the field, we can let them off. They can exercise as much as they want them. Yeah. So if they just want to plod around, they'll plod around. If they want to tear around, they can. Yeah. They're in control of it. We've, we've got plenty of shade here with the garden. They can come in here. Everything in our house is laminate paint or leather. So if it's cold for them to lay on. Some people can end up with some rather overweight Malamutes, mm. can't they? Malamutes have actually got very slow metabolism, so they don't actually need as much food as what people think they do, mm. because their metabolisms are so slow. When they did the expeditions with them years ago, they wouldn't, if they ate tons and tons of food, they wouldn't actually be able to carry the quantity of food the dogs would need. It'd be counterproductive for them. Can you tell us what you feed your Malamutes on? Um, they have a lot in the evenings, they tend to have their bones, so tonight they've got chicken carcasses. Today they had spaghetti spaghetti with um, pig hearts, um, a raw egg and cottage cheese today. Yeah. Um, they have tripe as well, so they will have tripe quite often in the morning, um, which they really enjoy. On Sundays they have porridge, so on a Sunday they have porridge with goat's milk and they have honey and pureed fruit into that. But contrary to what a lot of people say, and even some vets will say it, they can have raw chicken. Raw, raw, because dogs cannot have cooked, well you can have cooked chicken off the bone, but you cannot ever give a cooked chicken bone because it will splinter and it will get stuck in the gut and it can kill the dog, so it's really, really dangerous. Yes. I think it's yeah. the best thing I've ever fed my dogs on, to be quite Absolutely. honest. Malamutes um, have aggression problems with food, and that, that is a known thing with the breed, um, going back you know, when they were living out with, with the uh, Inuits and they would have to fight a little bit over the food. They have that sort of inept thing about wanting to defend their food. You've got a lot of Malamutes here. We tend to feed them separately, so we don't feed them together, purely because we're feeding chicken and it, or chicken bones or, or pig trotters, whatever it is they're having. It's going to take them time to eat it and they may not always eat all of it. So they could end up walking away and another dog come and get it. The, the altercation we've had with them has been over food. Yes. Um, and I love my dogs, I don't want to see any of them hurt. If somebody wants a Malibu, what sort of lifestyle should that person have? You really do need to be home with them. If you've just got one, they're pack animals and you will be their pack. They won't want to be left alone. And unfortunately, if Malamutes get left behind, and they then suffer from anxiety, they can wreck the house very quickly. And I always feel sad when I hear people keeping them in kennels on their own in the garden. They'd be so sad. What is the lifespan of a, a Malamute generally? On average, you're looking at 10, 10 yeah. to 14 years. And that's actually pretty good for a very large breed mm. dog because, of course, these are naturally large dogs. They're not bred to have the gigantogen or anything weird. They're true to what they were all those years ago. Yeah. yeah, they're not, you know, we don't try to breed them any smaller or any taller anything just just keep them as they are they're too lovely to be altered yeah. to the right home they are great fun you go backpacking with them you know you can do the treks with them there's weight pull as well you know you do weight pull them a test of strength 
Um, and people do just have them as pets, just as loving pets, as yeah. long as they get the exercise, the right diet, it's lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely, um, and I can see you, you're you obsessed by them. Yeah. Do you think you'll always have them? I think so. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go and um, put them on a rig, aren't we? You don't need to have snow in order to, to, to sled with these dogs, do you? You can just get a rig and you can get wheels and you can do it on dry land and, you, you know. Can. And these dogs enjoy it. I'm, I'm part of ANWA, which is the Alaska Melody Working Association, and I've been on the committee for 15. 15 years now. <laughs> These dogs love to pull. That, that's what they're bred to do, to pull heavy weights. Can't wait to have a go on your rig. <laughs> I'm slightly scared. One thing that Malamutes are great at is pulling sleds or rigs. They adore it and their love of pulling is rooted deep in their blood. Lorna was keen for me to have a go. Whether I was, was another matter. As well as being big, cuddly house companions and super sporting race dogs, Lorna's Malamutes also pay weekly visits to her local college in order to assist the students on their animal management courses. Daggy and Elvis and Loopy come into college with me. They're part of the animal care course. So students, while they're here, have the opportunity to carry out first aid on them. Um, they bandage them, groom Aww. them, feed them. When they're young, they made all their puppy food up for them. They also um, learn also about animal behaviour and knowing when to leave dogs alone. We do do stuff in the classroom as well before the dogs come in and students have to answer questions mm -hmm. um, about behaving around dogs and they have to sign it and I sign it to know they've okay. done it so that you know they, they understand a little bit about body language and yeah. things to keep so everybody safe. How many days a week do your dogs come in? Three days. Three days a week? Yeah, usually a Monday, Thursday yeah. and Friday. Lovely day today meeting Malamutes. Yes, he agrees. He's telling you now. Be sure to check out my videos every single week where I bring you films on wolves, wolf dogs, Nordic dogs, animal rescue and animal conservation. Bye for now. If you would like to find out more about Alaska Malamutes, then you can contact Lorna here.